we're going to close our discussions of the photochemistry of carbonyl compounds with a look at the beta cleavage of excited ketones and aldehydes. And to introduce this reaction type, I want to turn back the clock to introductory organic chemistry and a type of elementary step that you've probably seen before in the context of elimination mechanisms. This type of step occurs when we have a good electron source, typically a non-bonding lone pair, maybe on a nitrogen or oxygen or in an extreme case associated with a carbanion, located in a position that is beta with respect to a leaving group, or equivalently, the leaving group is beta to the electron source. If we think about the source atom here, we have an alpha atom and the leaving group is beta with respect to the electron source. This facilitates an elimination of the leaving group with negative charge from this molecule through electron flow that looks like this. And because the alpha beta bond breaks and the beta group departs with a pair of electrons, this is known as beta elimination. Keeping beta elimination in mind, we can immediately understand how the pi star electron of a photo excited carbonyl compound can be analogous to this carbanion in the sense that it can promote elimination processes. So now I want you to imagine the photo excited state of a carbonyl compound, say an n pi star state, looks like this. Imagine that a leaving group was connected to the beta carbon, just as the electron pair in the beta elimination case supported loss of the leaving group with a pair of electrons and negative charge, this high energy nucleophilic pi star electron can facilitate elimination of the leaving group with radical character now and the formation of a new carbon-carbon pi bond. This bottom process is what we call beta cleavage and it is fundamentally very similar to the beta elimination process just involving this unpaired single pi star electron as kind of the nucleophilic driver of things if we like. Beta cleavage can give rise to enols, which commonly tautomerize back to carbonyl compounds, and so it's a way, for example, to photoreduce the alpha positions of carbonyl compounds, and the result of beta cleavage is a radical pair, which can go on and actually do a variety of processes, as we've already seen. So, one of the key things we just noticed is that the pi star electron in the n pi star or pi pi star state can facilitate beta cleavage because it's relatively high in energy and relatively nucleophilic. In a beta cleavage process, that nucleophilic orbital overlaps with an electrophilic sigma star orbital associated with a weak bond, and this is very important to make the thermodynamics work out. The bond must be weak or associated with a group that can support radical character, and that weak bond is beta to the carbonyl group. Because the reaction involves the pi star electron, we should expect in general that it can occur from both in pi star and pi pi star excited states, since the lower energy SOMO has in some sense nothing to do with this reaction. That said, in the latter case, because the orbital alignment works out, it may be that a sigma to pi interaction is also relevant to the beta cleavage process, with the pi electron acceptor receiving electron density from the sigma bonding orbital of the beta bond that cleaves. And a great example is found in the cyclopropyl ketones, these alpha cyclopropyl ketones with relatively weak bonds linking the alpha and beta carbons of these structures. Photo excitation facilitates cleavage of the alpha beta bond and this kind of obscures the fact that it's the pi star electron that really drives this since that pi star electron appears sort of transitory. You know, the ultimate result is the formation of this diradical structure, but that happens only because this pi star electron is driving the beta cleavage process. Overall, however, the electron flow just looks like homolytic cleavage of that alpha beta bond. We end up with a 1,3 diradical structure in this particular case like this, where the relatively strained cyclopropyl ring has opened. That's what's driving this process, the release of ring strain. And from here, a number of different things can happen, but what's occurring here is a kind of internal disproportionation process to give rise to an alkene. And this actually may be intra or intermolecular depending on the circumstances, but the electron flow is something along these lines with the hydrogen transfer that facilitates the formation of a carbon-carbon pi bond between the alpha and beta carbons. I did want to illustrate here quickly how the alpha-beta bond is well aligned to cleave based on its overlap with the pi star orbital in the carbonyl compound. 
This also helps explain why the other carbon-carbon bond does not break. So we've got two possibilities of bonds that can cleave right here, right? And if we just, if we highlight the one that does not break in a different color, let's highlight that one blue, we'll see that it's actually retained throughout this reaction, but it's not entirely clear why that's the case. Why does this bond remain unbroken while the bond highlighted in green cleaves? Well, if we appreciate that this involves a pi star to sigma star orbital interaction, we'll understand that the sigma bond needs to be, roughly speaking, perpendicular to the plane, the trigonal plane of the carbonyl carbon. And that's what we see is going on with this bond right here. This bond is this bond highlighted in green. And the bond highlighted in blue is very much in the plane, in that trigonal plane of the, the carbonyl carbon. And so it overlaps very poorly with the pi star orbital of the carbonyl group and with that nucleophilic pi star electron as a consequence. The stronger orbital interaction is between the sigma star orbital of this CC bond and the pi star orbital of the carbonyl. And if we're talking pi pi star excited state, we can see how the pi orbital of the carbonyl group would also be well aligned with the sigma orbital of this CC bond and fairly poorly aligned with the sigma orbital of this CC bond that's roughly in the trigonal plane of that carbonyl carbon. We've just seen that cyclopropyl ketones can open through beta cleavage. Alpha beta epoxy ketones, where an oxygen replaces one of the carbons in the cyclopropane ring, can also ring open through beta cleavage. And this may lead to rearrangement of the starting materials, analogous to the case we just saw, or stereoisomerization. So let's see what that looks like. Rearrangement to beta diketones is possible through a mechanism that resembles what we just saw for cyclopropyl ketones. It's just we end up with a beta diketone instead of an enone. Photoexcitation results in cleavage of one of the carbon-oxygen bonds in the epoxide, the one that links the alpha carbon to the epoxide oxygen. This generates a 1,3 diradical, similar to what we just saw, just with an O dot instead of a C dot there a disproportionation process or internal hydrogen atom transfer, we might say, then produces this enol, which of course can undergo tautomerization to form the beta diketone. So we actually get a enone looking intermediate that tautomerizes to a beta diketone as the final product. In cases where the 1,3 diradical can reclose with some efficiency, we also observe epimerization at the alpha carbon if it's stereogenic. So for example, here we're starting with a compound containing a stereogenic alpha carbon. Photoexcitation causes beta cleavage, and we end up with the familiar 1,3 diradical now, C dot, O dot, and this radical center is now planar. If there's bond rotation around this carbon-carbon bond, we can imagine the oxygen going from above the plane to below the plane of the screen, and then radical recombination would place the oxygen on the bottom face and would result in a change in configuration at this stereocenter. And ultimately, we would expect to end up with a mixture of the two enantiomers over time. So not the most exciting reactions in the world, but good evidence that beta cleavage is occurring in these substrates, and a big driver of it is relief of ring strain in the epoxide ring, analogous to the cyclopropyl case that we saw in the last slide. Photoexcitation can induce the loss of a variety of good leaving groups from the alpha carbon of ketones and aldehydes through a beta cleavage process. All of these can support radical character to a greater or lesser extent, and so they can all be released through photochemical beta cleavage. In the presence of a hydrogen donor, and even relatively weak hydrogen donors, such as alcoholic solvents, can serve in this regard, we would get essentially net reduction, where we're taking a bond to a more electronegative atom. Generally speaking, if you look at the choices here, they're all more electronegative than hydrogen, replacing that with a bond to less electronegative hydrogen. So this looks like a reduction process. Benzoins are actually a really interesting case study of fragmentation initiated by beta cleavage. So in a benzoin, we have a, an additional phenyl ring relative to our general case above connected here. And what's found here is that these, first of all, upon photoexcitation, undergo rapid intersystem crossing to the triplet excited state. And this phenyl ring in the benzoin actually becomes involved with the excited carbonyl group forming this 1,3 diradical structure. 
What looks like a beta cleavage then is really facilitated by Bronsted base, which deprotonates this intermediate to give rise to the product, which is a benzofuran. And so overall, this is kind of a crazy looking reaction where we formed a benzofuran through the loss of HX from this starting material. And it hinges on some kind of beta cleavage process happening with respect to the carbonyl group. It was proposed in a later paper that this picture is actually more complicated than it first appears as the generation of a triplet cation was proposed after the loss of X minus from this triplet excited state. Without getting too in the weeds, I'll just end by saying that this is a nice way to make benzofurans starting from benzoins where the only reagent we need is light and a little bit of base.